Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, how would I go about learning how to build a web application? Because there's so many conflicting opinions and advice out there on the internet. So how do I know what to pick from? So let's get into it. Well, that is a very easy question, question to answer. All you have to do is ignore everybody else on the internet, all the bloggers and all the other videos and simply go have this little channel of mine as the one stop shop for absolutely everything that you need to learn in order to be a professional software developer. And for $29.95, I will also include my five steps how to master every single job interview. I hope we can, we, uh, I'm joking, just FYI, guys. I understand the problem. I'm fully aware of how big this problem is. It's actually one of the main reasons why I started making these little videos of mine without any intention for like, I don't have any intent to make any money from this whatsoever. And it's just something I do for fun. And the reason why is because I realized something that you probably have noticed very, most, most of you probably have. There is a, uh, no, not that word. There is a lot of people out there on the internet who will tell you different things and will talk to you about various ways of building a web application. And as you, as this point person pointed out, there is sometimes conflicting advice. There's sometimes a, it's a hard time to figure out what's actually relevant. So I will give you the steps that I took myself to be able to just kind of wade my way through all of this. So the first and foremost thing that you should ask yourself is, all right, what within web development do you want to be able to do? In other words, are you a backend developer, a frontend developer, or are you a full stack developer? That's something that you need to decide on. You see, if you are interested in one specific area, the path becomes very clear. If you're a full stack developer, you're going to have to learn it all. And this, then the second thing that you really have to think about is what, like, what is your purpose with becoming a developer? Is your purpose to become a professional, a person who has, uh, you know, a full, does this as a full time job? Or do you simply want to make websites, things, st stuff like this, basically. And then you should start with the most basic thing, every single human being who wants to be a professional, and even to a point I would say, even if you just want to do it as a hobby, the first and foremost thing that you should do is to go out and look at the job postings on a, any of them, like it doesn't matter which one. And then you should have a look at basically what you perceive to be the most popular. There are a few surveys as well, surveys as well where you can look into what's fairly popular. And then you do some basic research. You go and look at the languages that are out there, like that are on the top list of things that in, are relevant in your region or wherever you want to work. And you make a, make a selection because the big dirty secret of web development guys is that when you start out as a junior, it almost doesn't matter what you pick because for smaller projects, it is almost insignificant what language you pick. You will hear people who will tell you that one language is better than the other, one is more performant. Guys, all of this is subjective bullshit because there's always a pro and a, there's always pros and cons with every language, every single one of them. You can, I can give you an example, a good one. Most people these days will claim that Golang is the best language out there. It's super, super, super beloved and you know, it should be used for absolutely everything when the reality is that it's almost non-existent in terms of job opportunities in comparison with PHP, who is, which is one of the most disliked languages for, by a lot of people, although it is by far one of the most common ones on the web. And you see, the, the, it's just different perspectives. Java is also a fairly disliked uh, language for quite a lot of people, although it is the most one of the most relevant languages, if not the most relevant language for like backend web application work in the industry. And this is kind of what I'm telling you guys: all <laughs> these conflict, all this conflicting advice is coming from people with different perspectives on these this topic of you know how do we actually build real web applications and how do we build them well. 
And this is, you can think of it as very sim a similar discussion to, well, I will give you a, the best analogy that I can give you, which is martial arts. A, I've been a, I've been a practi practitioner for quite a few years, and one of the golden rules when you get to be, to be a little bit more mature in martial arts is that you have this unspoken norm, which is that you never start a conversation about, by saying something like, oh, this defense or th this system is better than that system, or this uh, form of martial arts is better than that system, more effective, because it's a very immature mindset to have that when you think about there from the only if you only think about martial arts from the perspective that it is intended to allow you to you know fight another human being and you know hurt them in some fashion and that's your only only viewpoint it gives you a very narrow mindset and it's one of the most common things that people actually discuss on like forums and they fight about these sorts of things on the forums while as the more mature practitioners understand that each and every person who practice martial arts does it for a different reason a like a ultimate fighter is practicing for one reason a shaolin monk is practicing for another reason and unless you can understand these differences you will never understand what it true it means to be a true master of martial arts so the same thing applies here. Every single person have their own tools, their own preferences, and they will give you different varying, varying pieces of advice that most of them are, I mean, it's not like they're giving you completely, uh, for the most part, not giving you completely irrelevant, irrelevant advice, but in order for you to understand your, for yourself what advice to take and what not to take, you first and foremost need to answer those questions. What is your, what's the purpose what is your like? What is your goal, and how far are you willing to go for that goal? An example is I tell a lot of juniors that for job security, Java is probably or C sharp is one, among the best choices out there. And then they start working, and they kind of feel like, oh, now that now that now, now that Frederick has said it, I'm anchored to picking these two languages. And then they start, and they kind of don't like it. They don't like the way the ecosystem work or the typing system or things of this nature. It becomes hard for them, and then it becomes this weird situation where you seem to believe that, all oh, right, that's the only language. No, no, I never said that it was the only thing. I said that this is a very good choice. But if you, as I said, if you actually done your homework and you checked the languages that are in the top tiers, then you should, in, in, for job purposes, then you should know that there are, are alternatives to this. And that's the thing that you need to figure out for yourself. That's why there's so much conflicting advice, because the people who are giving you advice, they're giving advice from their perspective. Unless you can figure out what's right for you, everything's going to seem conflicting. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to taking advice from people on programming, even if it's me, you I mean you shouldn't take my word for it that's that's why it's so important for you to actually really ask yourself these questions like what type of role do you want within software development and what is your goal with software development because without those pieces of information it's impossible for someone to to know what advice to give you and that's that's where it all starts so if your intentions uh, intention is to be a professional, you're going to have one set of requirements and you're going to have to ask yourself those questions. What is most important to you? Is, you know, is the salary the most important thing? Is job security the most important thing? Are you willing to move for your job position? Do you need to work with something that is very large and stable in terms of like in languages? Or are you okay with working with something that is less mainstream but has more job opportunities? There's tons of these different questions that you need to ask and answer. And when you have, you go out on the job postings and then you start looking at something or you start looking at the options that you have. And then you pick something even if it's just because you, you can just go to their website. Each language has their own website. The tooling has their own website. And then you just start with something because everybody has to start somewhere. Guys, you're not, if you start, start as a professional software developer, you can let go of this idea that you're going to stick with one language forever because you're not. You're going to learn quite a lot of languages as you go along. And you just need to let go of this idea that you need to learn it all. Just start with something. Get good at one thing and then you figure out some stuff out and then you might switch to something else. It's not wasted time. Everything is going to hone your skills, but you have to start somewhere. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Have a great day.